Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Edna Dare. And I'm Bo Leung. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Lawmakers slams contractors' offer to pay water bills for households affected by lead contamination. City's top court allows famous restaurant to close in latest twist to long-running family feud. Republican presidential hopefuls slugged out at latest televised debate. Each public housing household affected by the lead contaminated water scandal will get $660 deducted from their water bills as compensation. The amount will be paid by the firms that installed water pipes in the estate, but the move has been described as not good enough. Nearly four months after the lead-tainted water scandal broke, the four contractors who worked on 11 public housing estates have agreed to help pay the water bills for the residents affected by the lead scare. They have agreed to fork out $20 million to cover the bills. Chief Secretary Kerry Lam said the four firms will pay $660 for the 29,000 households out of goodwill. Housing Minister Anthony Jung added this will be done over the next three years. But Democratic Party lawmaker Helena Wong, who first revealed the water problem, said it's not enough. The uh, compensation of water bill uh, is only part of the responsibility of the four major contractors. But I think their responsibility is not just to uh, give some uh, compensation to the household. But I think it is more important that they need to uh, replace all the water parts uh, that contaminate water. But uh, I regret so much that at this stage, we still don't know, that, don't know yet when we can have all this replaced. Excess lead was found in materials used to solder pipes at the estate, prompting the government to launch an inquiry. The four contractors implicated in the scandal have blamed subcontractors for using solder containing lead to connect the pipes. The company operating the famous Yongki restaurant in Central may shut down after the city's top court reversed a previous ruling. Feuding family members who own the restaurant's operator have 28 days to strike a deal to buy out each other's stake. Vicky Wan reports. The appeal to wind up the company that operates Yonki restaurants in Central was approved in the Court of Final Appeal today, adding another twist to a long-running family feud. The legal action was launched by the widow of Kinson Kam, who along with his brother operated the restaurant which is famous for its roast goods through a parent company they jointly owned. The argument between Cam and his younger brother, Ronald, has been dragging on for years. But the liquidation order will not be carried out for 28 days to give both sides a chance to negotiate by each other's shares. The court's decision refers a lower court ruling that it has no power to wind up the company because it was registered overseas. But today, the judges decided that there was a sufficient connection between the company and Hong Kong, including shareholders and directors of its subsidiaries, are all residents, and their assets and businesses are based here. The court also said income from the company is derived from business here, and all factors leading to the dispute took place in Hong Kong. It also concluded that, despite a mutual understanding between the two brothers, that they were entitled to a hand in the business, but the younger Cam had breached the terms by excluding his older brother. After the court ruling, Carol Cam, board member of the restaurant and son of the younger brother, told reporters he had been offering a fair buyout price to the other side, but it was continuously rejected. He said no explanation was given and he hasn't ruled out the possibility the other side may want to bargain for more money through the courts. Accompanying his teary mother, the younger brother Ronald Kemp said he hopes the case can be settled as soon as possible, as he wants to continue operating the 73-year-old restaurant. However, the family of the older brother dismissed the accusation that they were after more money, saying taking the case to court was their last attempt to strike up negotiations with the opposite side. They also insist their buyout figure was rejected. Neither side refute how much they have been offering, 
but said they are willing to talk to each other in the coming days to settle the case. It's believed the restaurant is unlikely to shut down if both parties fail to reach a consensus during the 28-day period. Vicky Wang, ATV News. Hong Kong Disneyland has raised its ticket prices, but the theme park insists the increase will not affect visitor numbers. But first, Health Chief Koeng Man has urged the public to eat less processed meats after a World Health Organization report said they cause cancer. In a review published last month, the World Health Organization's Agency for Cancer Research labeled processed meats in its Group 1 list, along with tobacco and asbestos, indicating there is sufficient evidence of cancer links. Speaking to lawmakers today, Health Secretary Koeng Man echoed the report, but stressed there is a huge gap in the risk of death by consuming processed meat and smoking. Co added that cigarettes are still more carcinogenic than processed meats, although they are in the same category. However, Co called on the public not to eat too much processed meat products. We are not saying that the public should quit eating processed meats at all, but they should understand the risk of developing bowel cancer will increase if they consume these products too often, Ko said. Ko also said the government has adopted different ways of reminding the public about healthy eating. The Center for Health Protection says a woman in Shenzhou and a female farmer in Hangzhou are confirmed to have contracted the deadly H7N9 avian influenza. The two victims are said to be in serious condition. A health department spokesman said according to previous seasonal patterns, it is likely that the activity of avian influenza viruses might increase in winter. The spokesman added that health surveillance measures are in place at all boundary control points and urged the public to remain vigilant. Starting from today, adults have to pay $539 to visit Disneyland, $40 more than the old price. But the cost for a child ticket has gone up from $355 to $385. But elderly tickets remain at $100. Those holding annual passes, mostly locals, can get them renewed with a 15% discount before the end of March next year. Discount tickets will also be available for the disabled from January. The park says it doesn't see the price increase affecting the admission rate as tourists only make up a small portion of visitors and most local customers buy annual passes. This is the fourth time Hong Kong Disneyland has adjusted ticket prices since the park opened in 2005. Overseas, Republican U.S. presidential hopeful Donald Trump has attacked his main party rival after media reports accused him of lying about his youth in his autobiography. But Trump himself has been slammed for his plans to build a wall to keep Mexicans out of the U.S. and deport millions of undocumented immigrants. Arthur Okiola reports. Republican presidential hopeful squared off again in their fourth debate. Frontrunner Donald Trump was heavily criticized for his anti-immigration proposals, which include building a wall along the border with Mexico and deporting illegal immigrants. We will have a wall, the wall will be built, the wall will be successful, and if you think walls don't work, all you have to do is ask Israel. What a generous man you are. 12 million illegal immigrants, to, to send them back, 500,000 a month, is just not, not possible. And it's not embracing American values. We all know you can't pick them up and ship them across, back across the border. It's a silly argument. It's not an adult argument. Meanwhile, Trump's main rival, Ben Carson, blamed the media for accusations that he lied in his biography including a claim he was offered a scholarship to a top military academy. We should vet all candidates. I have no problem with being vetted. What I do have a problem with is being lied about and then uh, putting that out there as truth. Earlier at a rally in Illinois, Trump slammed Carson for conflicting claims from his youth about trying to stab a friend and later saying it was a relative. You stabbed somebody? 
And the newspapers say, you didn't do it. And you said, yes, I did, I did it. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I stabbed him and it hit the belt. And they said, you didn't do it. If they said I didn't do it, I'd be so happy. <laughs> this is the only election in history where you're better off if you stab somebody. Meanwhile, four Republican presidential hopefuls who are trailing in the polls refrain from infighting at their debate and instead attack people asking questions they didn't like. Who in Congress do you most admire on the Democratic side? I need one name from each of you. And let's start with Governor Jindal. Look, we can waste our time, and I think this is why people are so frustrated with the last debate, with these kinds of silly questions. We've only got a certain amount of time to talk about the economy. The Republican Party will nominate its presidential candidate at its convention in July next year. Arthur Urquiola, ATV News. American lawmakers have passed the latest U.S. defense bill, which makes it more difficult to close the controversial prison at Guantanamo Bay. But first, Russia is demanding a list of terrorist groups in Syria to end doubts about whether they are actually militants funded by the U.S. Here's Arthur Okula. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says Moscow wants an agreement reached at peace talks in Vienna on a list of terrorist groups operating in Syria. Lavrov said this would clear up any confusion about whether certain militant groups are affiliated with others. Russia has been bombing Islamic State militants in Syria, but the West has been accusing it of targeting groups who are armed, funded and trained by the U.S. and its allies, some of which have been affiliated with al-Qaeda. The U.S. Senate has passed a sweeping defense policy bill that will make it harder to close the military prison in Guantanamo Bay one of President Barack Obama's main campaign promises. Obama is likely to approve the bill. There are a number of provisions in the NDAA uh, that are important to uh, running and protecting the country. And um, so that's why I would expect that you would see the president uh, sign the NDAA when it comes to his desk, whenever it comes to his desk. Uh, but it, that certainly is not a change. Uh, reflect a change in our position or the intensity of our position about the need to close the prison at Guantanamo Bay. The bill also includes over 500 million U.S. dollars funding for militants in Syria. If not, on this vote, the yeas are not. Hundreds of fast food and low pay workers protested in New York in support of a 15 U.S. dollar an hour minimum wage. The protesters crammed outside a downtown McDonald's and chanted their demands over a megaphone. Rallies for a living wage were scheduled in 500 U.S. cities. Industry lobby groups say the proposed pay increase would be unsustainable and lead to job cuts. Japan has unveiled its first commercial airplane in half a century. The Mitsubishi regional jet took off on a one-hour return flight from Nagoya Airport. The test flight of the 100-seat aircraft comes after three years of delays. Mitsubishi says the jet burns a fifth less fuel than similar-sized aircraft thanks to new generation engines. So far, more than 200 firms have placed orders for the plane, the biggest for 100 of them, from a U.S. company. The last commercial Japanese passenger jet was the 64-seat YS-11, which entered service 50 years ago. Arthur Urquiola, ATV News.